Oh, okay, we're off and running. We're off and running. So, hello and welcome, everyone, to another episode of Nothing But Love, um, our new webinar series for 2024. Uh, my name is Russ and... Lewis. Sorry? I'm on dark and junk country, never seeded. Oh, we're just about to go there. We can go there right now, actually. I'd like to respectfully acknowledge the uh, Gadigal people, um, who are the traditional owners and custodians and first people of the land which I'm joining you from. Um, I'd like to respectfully pay um, uh, all regards to elders past and present and would like to extend any uh, or, or my respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us here tonight. And you're on what Dark country? Dark and country. And if you'd like to put where you're coming to us from in the chat, um, that would be greatly appreciated too. I can see we've got a few more coming in. Diana's coming in from Western Australia, which is the oh, furthest fantastic. away. Diana was a great um, participant of our online uh, catch-ups during COVID. Oh, right. Fantastic. So for those that don't know, my name's Russ Gluis, and I'm the coordinator of ACON's Ageing Program, The Love Project, or Living Older Visibly Engaged. Uh, the Love Project aims to empower LGBTQ people, including people living with HIV, um, to lead healthier, active, and more socially connected lives. Um, I'm very grateful and should have a shout out to New South Wales government for supporting the webinar. Um, always looking for whatever funds we can get to, to do whatever activities the community asks us to do. Yep. Um, we're also doing a little bit of a collaboration, Seymour, with um, the Northern Rivers office. So we're going to really spread the love everywhere and try to, to speak to regional um, heroes uh, as well. Is um, Tobin and, Saunders up that way? Yes, he is, yeah. Um, and Maud Boat too, I think, oh, lives right. up in yeah, the Northern yeah. Rivers. So yep. I've got a few suggestions for people, mm -hmm. um, but I really want to sort of make it sort of extend it sort of statewide Absolutely, because mm, of mm, Acon, mm. Um, but also but there's a lot of women up that way too. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've got a pretty big list, but I'm always open to anybody else. So if you've got suggestions, um, both yeah. community and yourself, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, because the webinar really marks um, the tenth anniversary of the Love Project this year. Oh wow, that's great! Yeah, wow. I know. I can't believe I've been running it for ten years. <laughs> And you're still alive. Um, and I'm still alive. I've still been all of these incredible Kicking off those people. high heels. Kicking off the high heels. I know just to, to be with the community. But honestly, it's been life-changing for me to, to actually really kind of work with, be with, and listen to our elders. Um, and I feel quite privileged, really. Uh, I, I never really understood what I was getting myself into to start with. No, you never do it. You never do, do you? No, <laughs> absolutely. You just say, yes, you I'll know, do that. <laughs> it is about how much, you know, you can do as the, the professional yeah. that you are and connect to different people who are prepared to give as well. Because I think that's yeah. part of what makes our community so special in, in yeah. many ways, you know. Yeah. Volunteer for things as well. It, it means that at, at the end of the day, something else will happen not yeah. just, you know, a monetary return. But when yeah. you get to my stage of life. Yeah, you know, our to... stage of life, yes. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm a little older than you, darling, but I won't <laughs> quibble. <laughs> I did get some sleep last night. <laughs> oh, because you were um, you're fresh off the back of your um, very successful exhibition, yeah, um, which I saw on opening night. Really, congratulations, like extraordinary. You. Extraordinary. You. Um, I'll come back to that um, mm. because I kind of want to start maybe just, uh, I believe you were born in Darlinghurst. I was born at St Margaret's in Darlinghurst. Wow. Because yeah. that was interesting because a lot of us queers come mm. from out of town yeah. into the big city because mm. um, this is where our kind of century is and this is where our tribes are. Um, so Tell me, what, what's it, what was it like to sort of grow up in Sydney and, and kind of be part well, of the, the scene? It, well, not necessarily just part of the scene from birth. Yeah. Um, I was um, born there and grew up in Randwick, so a stone's right. throw from the city. Could always come in, you know, bus, 
drive in, whatever. Um, and I was fortunate enough to get a good education, one of five in the family, um, but a, a bit of a rebel from the very beginning because I think um, I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't able to be controlled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the restrictions <laughs> that my father and mother tried to put on me. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and other issues that occurred, you know, because I was the second of five children, there yeah. were favourites that, that were there and I wasn't one of those favourites. But, you know, yeah. I... Were they, I, were they progressive parents? Were well, they my mother was a pharmacist. Or... Yep. My father was a drug dealer. Yep. Medical detailer. Yeah, yeah, medical uh, detailer. We love that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they met through her pharmacy. So that was, you know, pretty cool. And she was older than him, but she struggled because um, when they married, she had to convert to Catholicism, right. which became our burden, not hers. Yeah. yeah. And we ended up going to church every single morning to six o'clock mass. Wow, every morning. Every morning, yes. And what age was that? How old were oh, you there? Probably four or five years old, you know, wow. something like that. She dragged us along. Anyway, yeah. we're not going to dwell on that shit. No. <laughs> I've no. done <laughs> therapy to get, get through that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, it, it was kind of like, you know, it was a, a good, a relatively good family upbringing. Um, yeah. There were issues, obviously. Everybody's got issues. But I yeah. was, you know, pretty much a straight girl trying to find love in the big city. And yeah. I um, didn't realise. I mean, somebody pointed out to me that I, they thought I was gay. And, and that was, um, uh, you know, a while, a while back. But yeah. um, it, it hadn't really been part of my lexicon um, yeah. I was growing up. So yeah. I never really had kind of the pressures and the expectations that other people might have if they were born gay, you yeah. know, kind of escape that kind of um, rejection and, yeah. and, and processes that, you know, people who have had that, you know, thrown at them um, from an early age. And my, my, you know, issue was probably that my parents didn't really care that much about me. They loved me, but they didn't yeah. care enough. I had, you know, it was my elder sister who was the apple of my father's eye, then myself, and then my two brothers who my father just adored. Um, and he particularly, you know, sort of, um, oh, spoiled the shit out of my youngest brother who's now a narcissist. Right. So yeah. I think that, you know, right. and he's a born-again yeah. Christian who does not speak right. anything nicely because he's a homophobe. And right. it's like, hello, wow. there's absolutely no redemption for him yeah. as far as I know. Wow. He's never even said hello to my partner of 33 years. So, you know, it's kind yeah. of issues that you have to yeah. kind of, you know, go through. Everybody goes through issues and we have our yeah. ups and downs and we have, you know, good times and bad times. But, you know, family is supposed to be the one thing you can rely on and it wasn't mm. part of my thing how how so, did that work with sort of when you did discover you were sort of queer and coming out and were you able to involve them in that conversation or was it more it was you never a conversation my mother or... said you can do better than that <laughs> <laughs> you can do referring better referring to that. you know a woman could be you know, right okay woman. wow so that was an interesting moment and that was probably, yeah. um late 20s early 30s sometime like that um yeah. so you know it's it's just um, uh, not something I had to worry about. I just moved forward. I accepted myself, yeah. you know, I accepted who I had become yep. <clears throat> and I was looking for other relationships that were not male-centric. Yep. Um, and so... I think we all need to do that, don't we? We, we? we kind of, we come out and we're just going to offend throughout, through the, the world ourselves and know that the family is not necessarily going to be there. So we just have to, we just have to do it. Yeah. We just, it's I, amazing. I think probably, yeah. you know, growing up in the fifties and sixties, it yeah. was difficult for a lot of people and particularly yeah. people who were born gay, you know, or yeah. queer, you know, yeah. because they didn't have the sort of what was around then now back yeah. then. And there was still an awful lot of stigma attached to being gay or queer yeah. or, you know, um, different yeah. but you know I've kind of always been different and I think that's where 
I embraced myself through therapy and through, you know, a lot of hard work and, you know, um, and community, I, probably just finding your tribe, I guess. Well, and, some of that, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. my community is massive in, yeah. in some ways, but it's also people have their own little subgroups within the subgroup type of thing. Yeah. Um, but fortunately, I've known some absolutely amazing people, women mm. particularly, um, and some men who live overseas now. Yeah. But, um, and it's just that thing of, uh, you know, it, it it you have to work hard at your life. It's not an yeah. easy process. And <laughs> yeah. it, it, I think it's one of those things. We get a lot of joy when we find the right things to do. Mm. Um, like my creativity and my, you know, documentation work was, mm. was the thing that really kept me above water for a lot of different reasons mm. um i had a focus i had a really passionate focus for documenting you know the lesbian community and my community in mm. that that period so that you know i was i was celebrated even then you know mm. i'm celebrated less now um because i'm ex- i've extricated myself from the party scene which is mm. what you know i in earlier days documented for the Star Observer. And and I was the first photographer for the Star Observer because I knew Michael Glynn and he asked me to take some photos because he knew I was, you know, doing that stuff. Anyway, um, it was a case of it was my passion, you know, and and that documentation led to other things. Mm. Um, and, and but the other thing also was I had a, um, a particular bent for politics. Yeah, you know, yeah. I've always been on the side of the other because I'm yeah. female, because I'm now, you know, classified queer, because I've you know fought for my rights as a woman for so many years. Bloody bloody bloody! You know, yeah. I, I'm a privileged white woman. Yes. Yeah. Because I've been educated and and I have a lot of um, skills. But, you know, I'm, I'm cognizant of the number of um, other people within our subculture who yeah. still are not recognised, you know. Yeah. And I kind of... how, how, did, um, how did kind of the photography start? And because I know that you've done a lot of other different jobs too throughout mm. time mm. Um, and been very connected to lots of causes. But how did the photography kind of weave itself in or was that something that started very early or...? It did start pretty early. I um, I recognised recently that I have a very short attention span. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just recently, you recognised that, yeah. <laughs> well, more so than you know, I did when I was younger. Let's say, yeah. um, I need to have a, a solution or a you know problem solved reasonably yeah. quickly, um, and. I mean, I was on the board of the Pride Lesbian and Gay Community Centre for three years, mm. and that was probably the the kind of most um, not stagnating, but but kind of um, involved that I was with in a community organisation, um, doing stuff for community. I mean, I was still mm. taking photos and still doing all that sort of thing, but I was able to utilise my nursing skills as well for the New Year's Eve party where there was 10,000 people and I could roam around, yeah. drag in people who looked a tad green because they'd taken yeah. wrong medications with their party mm. drugs and needed a bit of support. I mean, mm. you know, it was those were the days when those sort of things kind of happened yeah. and nowadays it's standard procedure to look after yeah. you have to have those medical things yeah. you know set up but well, that's before well before all the rovering and everything that happens now yeah exactly exactly um and that was that was a good thing about mardi gras and you know akon akon always mm. did those safe sex sluts yeah Yep. I have a lot of photos of safe sex sluts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny that. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, yeah, but it's that thing of, you know, when you've got skills and you can use them and they can yeah. build people, you feel that you're being used. You feel that you're being, um, and that's the thing I know also, I like to contribute to my community, to yeah. our society. You know, I my current passion is actually First Nations people and mm the issues that they are facing, because I think for me, I would have loved to have seen First Nations have a voice to Parliament before we got married. You know, yeah. marriage equality seems like a waste of time for a feminist. 
Mm. Um, it makes life easier for some people, definitely. Yep. Um, but it's just that thing of, as a feminist, you know, it's it's a construct and mm. I don't see the need. But It almost seemed like the marriage was sort of a blueprint for what could have happened in um, the referendum, but it well, didn't I think go that way. Well, I think the was the referendum um, didn't have enough support from white people, A, mm. and the racists were louder and more vocal. Yeah. And, you know, the Duttons and the, you know, Reinhardts and the, the people who didn't want it to occur, sh you know, really short-circuited the whole yeah. process. Um, yeah. I can only hope that, you know, that the next phase, which is what I'm involved in now, does help and does work because I think we need to – we need those, like, six million people who were pro, you know, mm. reconciliation, Macarata and a treaty to move forward with – to, to get those things happening for Indigenous people. Well, that's a good segue to perhaps go back into the exhibition because it was astounding, really. Like, um, such a cross-section over the years of political events. And I've listed a few of them here. So it's kind of really reflecting, like, the yes vote, defending abortion, um, age of consent, the AIDS quilt, um, war and peace, racism, genocide, decriminalising homosexuality, drag, um, community celebrations, trans. Christianity, sorry? Trans. At trans, uh, yeah. Um, indigenous communities, that beautiful last kind of whole wall um, mm. was really beautiful. Um, and obviously uh, lesbian visibility and, and much more. But how do you um, – it, it felt like there was a, a bit of a um, highlight on First Nations – people which was really beautiful but how do you yeah, kind of go into that process well, of putting a something health. like that together oh okay, right, yeah, yeah. you know um i have too many million photos so that was yeah. a difficult process but we had someone from the national uh, from the national arts school, art school yeah. yeah trina uh cashman and right. um I think the fact that she was able to, you know, sit down with me about half a dozen times and kind of go, well, what about this one? You know, how about this and how about that? And then, you know, I had a few a scanned um, images and then we kind of whittled some of those out as well. And then we got to final prints and, you know, it was just 30 major prints, large right. prints for the whole exhibition. And then I did that slideshow, which is what you yeah. get the other stories from. Um, was there only 30? Are. It seemed like more than that. Okay. No, yeah. I know. Well, that's yeah. the beauty of kind of that space and yeah. and and also um, how you can, with a, you know, um, a kind of, a, you know, a, a carousel of images, yeah. continue the dialogue about the joy of our community because yeah. most of the pictures to me were kind of powerful images of what, what we've fought for, what we as people have fought mm. for over 30, 40 years, you know, from anti-war mm. um, rallies through to anti-racist rallies through to gay and lesbian rights lobbies, through to feminist issues, through to Indigenous issues. I mean, I may, I, I, I'm late to the party in some ways to Indigenous issues, but I have been involved in photographing things since the early 80s so I yeah. kind of feel you know a good connection there that I yeah. have maintained you know because I th the thing is you can't be everywhere all the time yeah 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 um, and you must sort of build up a a certain kind of um trust with people too um and they know or if you're if you're around you're going to capture great images and they're going to it's not the way it goes it was going no? in those days no no no, no? um yes to the community when I was in it, but yeah. I'm, I'm I tried the invisible trick. You know, I will ask people, can I take their photos? But yeah. in the past, it was kind of you just you had to be there, you had to participate, you were part of those, you know, those movements. And that, I mean, as a a woman, I'm part mm. of the women's movement. I'm part of feminism. Yeah. I'm part of queer culture. Yeah. Um, I'm not part of indigenous culture, but I think it's really important now that white people step up to try and help indigenous people. Yeah. They don't have the numbers, but yeah. I'm not speaking on behalf of them. You know, yeah. I'm I'm listening to them a hundred percent, and that's what yeah. 
Okay. You know, that's and the difference. Yeah. Very well aware of. So I've got a couple of friends who are Indigenous, and I'm I listen to them, and and I'm participating in other ways of supporting that. Yeah. I think that's um, certainly uh, something. It's lovely to be part of Acon because Acon have got such a a solid brief on on where we go with sort of including everyone, and mm. certainly over the last kind of five, six, seven years with the wraps that we've had, and we're about to enter in sort of the third um, wrap. Um, it really just sort of filters all the way through the whole organisation and you think about how you work um, and communicate and speak to and include Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in kind of everything you do. Mm, it's mm. not just a side thought. It's like, well, I'm yeah. going to do this. How do we, how do we include um, mm -hmm. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. So, yeah, it's important. Well, what about uh, some of the images around in the exhibition kind of around um, decriminalising homosexuality in sort of 82, 84? Yep. Because yep. I was only like 20 or something. So it was completely, all I was thinking about was getting it well, really. You know, you were trying to have your life. You, yeah, you tried, yeah. You know, I was hanging out and I yeah. love demonstration, darling. You know, that's yeah. my, that's Absolutely. my you know, reason do, do you for living. <laughs> do you remember me? Because I mean, talking to Robin and Robin last time, that they were kind of, they touched a bit on sort of the dykes kind of being out on their bikes, kind of helping gay men and patrolling and, and yeah, don't don't overdo that, you know. Right. Yes, they did do it. Yeah, um, but you know, it was kind of sensationalized a little bit as right. well. Um, yeah. at, from my perspective, because I knew one yeah. of the bikes, and she was really good at self promotion. Right. Okay. <laughs> Let's get to that. Yeah. And but you know, they did. They at the time that they did spend on the roads, which you know, back streets and things like that, yeah. bikes and stuff, made a difference to you know. A period of time but yeah. you know the anti-violence project did also do a lot of posters um yeah. i was involved in creating some of those posters talking about how to be safe um, yeah. you know don't go by yourself keep an eye on your buddy always watch if people spike drinks you know and mm. keep an eye on single males at bars if if you know they look a bit overly drunk don't yeah. you know, watch who takes them out, et cetera. Um, yep. So there were things going on during that period that um, probably don't get remembered as much as the kind of um, stories now in a way. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. those that's why, you know, my photos do tell some of those stories. And yeah. you know, being on the streets at night was um, part of the protest era. Um, yeah. particularly for gay and lesbian rights lobbies. I mean, it was more the males that were out because, you know, the lesbians were having, you know, studying and working and they, you know, didn't have as much money. They've never had as much money as the males. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's where the gender inequality does occur. Yeah. Um, and we see that constantly now. <laughs> yeah. I'm Absolutely. I'm not yeah. going to go there. Yeah. Um, well, let's go to just one other image that I really um, loved was the, the AIDS quilt and sort of pulling back from that. And interesting, we've got our Afternoon Delight film event coming up in about two weeks' time, and we've got a couple of short films and a documentary, but one of the short films is a 25-minute doco on the AIDS quilt and the people wow. behind it. Um so it's really like it's a really beautiful kind of 25 minutes a little bit sad but it's also kind of quite uplifting in the in the joy that these people as they tell their stories about why they put the quilt I together guess. and how they yeah. did it and well, and how it made them feel and yeah, stuff like yeah. Yeah. And, and as a collaboration those quilts brought family members and people together to talk about yeah. the person they were creating the quilt for. I mean, yeah. I, I remember, you know, kind of distinctly the quilt that David McDarman made for Peter Tully. Mm. And and it's just that, you know, you kind of, you know, um, put like um, a, a tabloid image of, um, you know, a fierce queen dies of AIDS, family take everything or something like this. Yeah. You know? It was yeah. very political, but it was yeah. Yeah, incredibly humorous and yeah. You know, yeah. at the same time, you know. Um, and I think the, the thing about the quilts are that they're, they're vastly beautiful, absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. 
you know, yeah. and they shouldn't be locked up. They should be on display in, in you know, different places, not yeah. just, you know, little dark boxes somewhere. Yeah. Well, I think this sort of sort of really gives the history of, of mm. the quilt and when it was laid out and the power of, of what happens when it does get laid out and who gets to to experience it and well, see it and be a part it of it. The performance too. Oof, yeah, yeah. And walking amongst it. Mm. Mm. Uh, is there any anything um, over the years that uh, you've seemed passionate about everything, but is there anything that because I know sort of you talk a lot about kind of lesbian visibility, female visibility. Um, is that is that kind of one of the most important things that you've probably tried to capture? Well, yes. Yeah, I would say yes, because yeah. um, there were always more male photographers out there than female photographers. I mean, you yeah. know, um, Anne-Marie Callahan is now, you know, yep. kind of forerunner in the community doing stuff, which is great. Jamie James is out there doing certain elements of the community as well, which is great. Um, and they are a trans person. Um, William Yang has never stopped. <laughs> yeah, I know. Incredible. <laughs> she just goes and goes and goes. I know. Yeah. Um, and there have been other male photographers who've kind of, you know, floated in and out of the community, um, recognised yeah. it wasn't a, a great, you know, financial, you know, mechanism for them to survive on. Um, yeah. And so you can't, you know, it, you have to have a dedication to what you're doing to survive anyway yeah. in that kind of process. Um, and there were a couple of women who came and took photos who, you know, that wasn't their main reason for taking photos. It was kind of, you know, a bit of a um, a plaything, which really right. pisses me off because, you know, that draws attention and takes resources away from, you know, someone like me, me who yeah. was a professional photographer. But yeah. you know, it's all gone now. That's the past. Um, and I think it's, you know, that's why I've maintained my library and made sure my, you know, photos are in the um City of Sydney collection, online collection. Which yeah, people that's amazing. Guess. What, 4,000 plus no, photos? No, 6,000 now. <laughs> oh, 6,000 now. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and more will go on it because I haven't even yeah. up uploaded the World Pride ones I took last year. Right. Um, uh, it was fortunate that, you know, Fair Day didn't happen this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would have been shooting that too. Um, yeah. But yeah. Um, it's just that thing of I, I've always felt that there are not enough images of lesbians there. Yeah. And and that's why I've always tried to document, you know, lesbian events because yeah. it's, I mean, it's that includes trans women as well. Absolutely, um, yeah. But it's, it's that thing of, you know, we are second-class citizens within this capitalist system. Mm. It's, it's just that problem. And, you know, lesbians have children, so their finances yeah. are, you know, wrapped up in looking after family more so than gay men. I mean, gay men are having children as well, but they mm. have two incomes generally, the same with lesbians who have two incomes, yeah. but it's not quite the same dynamic, you know. Um, that's Then that's my opinion. I mean, mm. I think gay men would say they struggle just as much mm. as lesbians do, but, you know, it's... Do you, do you feel like there's... Uh, has there been change? Has it? Do you feel like things are? Well, definitely in, yeah. in you know the sort of what you see now yeah. with a lot of gay men having babies. I've got a couple of friends who yeah, just yeah, me too. Yeah, well. yeah. I've got and a it, couple who've got twins. Well, that's hell. <laughs> yeah, trouble, <laughs> trouble. <laughs> but yeah, no, I've known a woman who had twins as well, and she she was a magistrate and you know managed to survive. But um, I think I think it's you know. Um, we don't see enough stories about lesbians. Yeah. No, yeah. that's probably... that was what was powerful about being in the room in the ex last yeah. exhibition, I Intentional. think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. Um political and and lesbians. It was like uh, and but I, just... I did include men, you know, I didn't yeah. exclude yeah. men or trans people. Yeah. I made sure they were included in there. Yeah. Yeah. But they just weren't highlighted as body beautiful. Yeah. Which is, you know, passe in my mind. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Sydney is obsessed with that kind of body image. You see, you see I mean, plenty there's more of us, you know, more of us than just, you know, a six pack. <laughs> absolutely. So, what's the best thing about being a lesbian? 
Oh, give me a break. How am I supposed to answer that off the top? <laughs> Should have given me some warning there. Sorry, darling. <laughs> well, now that I'm older, <laughs> um, I'm I'm able to be, you know, to my poor girlfriend's dismay, a little louder. <laughs> I'm I'm actually much more um focused on, you know, some of the issues that I think are extremely important and therefore yeah. You know, I, I because I don't live in the city anymore also, I can focus yeah. on things that are far more relevant for the future, you know, climate yeah. change and Indigenous rights. They're, they're major issues as, issues as far as I'm concerned. I think the gay and lesbian community have had a good run from me. Yeah. <laughs> and I won't dismiss them at all. Yeah. But it's yeah. not like I need to be there holding mm. the hands because there are so many other photographers out there now and yeah. digital change the world of documentation yeah so in what way with digital like how does it changed like there's lots more photos being taken i guess but how does it sort of changed well i what think we see how we see. see what's going on overseas yeah they can engage with tiktok and watch dialogues yeah. You know the the immediacy of Instagram, and I mean, I'd say my cohort is on Facebook, um, yeah. and so that, <laughs> yeah. that is yeah. you know the way I interact yeah. with my friends. Yeah. Um, but I think it's also the thing of social media has changed the world. Yeah. You know, we have to kind of accept that and to stay engaged. I mean, look at what we're doing tonight. We're yeah. Paul, having a conversation, but we're reaching a whole lot of other people. Yeah, and discussing. Yeah. And we've got we've got a lovely uh, trans guy from Frankston in Mornington Peninsula, hmm? and we've got someone from Western Australia. So yeah, you're right. We've got we're someone able to sort of Illawarra. Yeah, Carlton, Darug yeah. land. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's yeah. one of those things, you know. Um, and I think that that's where you know we are privileged to have yeah. had the best of you know the last sixty years. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a, I'm ashamed to say we fucked it for the next generation. <laughs> but you know, we well, I to... still remember kind of uh, sort of when I, I had a cafe on Oxford Street in the '80s, and that's when kind of the Star was so important. The Star Observer and mm. magazines like that mm. were so important, and particularly in that AIDS epidemic like i remember sort of i'd have customers coming in um and they'd be fine and then a couple of weeks later they weren't and then i wouldn't see them for a while then all of a sudden i'd be picking up the star and reading like pages yeah. of obituaries yeah and seeing the names and the photos of people mm. um but it was like a weekly process or like you wouldn't see things as immediate as what you do now no. No, and and it was it was horrendous the number of people i mean i yeah. i was um I did a whole, a couple of things with a guy called Tony Carden, who was an activist. He's the one who put together the um, group um, of Clover Moors, the 40 Clover Moors. Oh, right, yeah. the same outfit as Clover, yeah. the, you know, Mardi Gras parade one time. And he was a, an actor who, you know, yeah. didn't quite make it. But he was in America and then came back to Australia once he got yeah. diagnosed. And his mother was very supporting him for him. Um, and there's a photo actually in the art, uh, in the archives at the State Library of him with a, a group of his family, him in a kind of a blanket because he was quite ill, and, you know, their straight family all around him, except for his father, in, in the Centennial Park. And it was kind of, he also got me to take a photo of him down at St Vincent's on a trolley discussing and outing St Vincent's for wow. not having enough room in yeah. the, you know, people were in the corridors waiting for yeah. attention, you know, and he was an activist who did those kinds of things, which yeah. was fantastic. Um, so, you know, I, I got insight into some of the things, but also I had a friend, um, Lizzie Griggs, who you probably know, yeah. who was on the first injecting and distribution bus for HIV and they wow. did yeah. condoms and, um, fixes for people who, you know, needed them um, for safe injecting. And, mm. you know, she, she, I met her through nursing back way back and she's still yeah. doing, you know, handing out prep these days to yeah, yeah. Um, clinics and stuff. Um, so it's that thing of, you know, I've had different people in and can, I've been connected with who are part of what has been our health 
and, uh, you know, um, not so much our education, but our laws um, and, you know, the protests. So yeah. that's, that, you know, nurtures me and keeps me um, proactive. Yeah. Is there is there anything that you kind of see in younger queer people that's better or worse? Or, well, I feel or, sorry or... for them in some ways. Yeah. Um, I think, Why is that? Well, I don't think that they've got this, I mean, particularly post-COVID, I think yeah. COVID shattered their kind of abilities to kind of connect and and you know and and also with online dating, Jesus, yeah. a minefield, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, how many and people can be so and can be so cruel? Yeah, exactly. So anonymously and, and cruel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I think I think that there's that you know body image shit that you know is constantly going on. Whereas if yeah. People could go to a bar and play some pool, you know, have a couple of drinks and meet, you know, other people. But I think what's happening now is there are more social networks, you know, like yeah. uh, there's one up here on the Central Coast, which is Naughty Noodle, and they yes. are yeah. in Sydney and doing fantastic work to create a community. Newcastle have their own community group. Um, Broken Hill Festival's happening, so yeah. they must have their own group. And you quite know, a few Pride events like Wagga Pride and uh, exactly. Yeah. And so I'm I'm kind of hopeful that people realise that they may be daggy groups, but yeah. they also are groups where you'll find like-minded people and be able to have conversations with them and feel accepted. Because I think, yeah. I think yeah. um, you'll always find you know groups are a bit eh, 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 when you first yeah. join them because everybody's sussing everybody else out. Yeah. Yeah. But at the <laughs> yeah. end of it, you know, if you listen and you participate and particularly listen rather than be the loudest one in the, the room, yeah. and you get that kind of feel that you are part of something. Yeah. And, you know, that's what I think we were all looking for. We wanted to be yeah. part of, you know, our community. And our community was just so different. There were so many yeah. different aspects to the community, you know. I mean, the Leather Boys used to dress up in drag the other mm. night of the week because you yeah. know, it was leather night they'd be in leathers and it was <laughs> drag night they'd be in drag. You know, it was yeah. multitasking all the time. <laughs> where, do you, where do you store all of that stuff? <laughs> Darling, they had a lot of closets. Oh. Um, what was I going to ask? Um, so when you're so involved and attached, and we did get a question sort of similar to what I'm going to ask, um, in the lead up, when you're involved so connectedly with the community, how do you kind of, um, I don't know, switch off self care, whatever you want to sort of say? How do you kind of do you feel like you need to sort of pull away sometimes because you're so involved in, in so much, or is it just part of your passion and what you enjoy and it gives you life anyway? Um, I think, I think there's that's a really good question because I think that there's you know ups and downs and I think yeah. I always got a lot of joy from Mardi Gras I mean, it was our Christmas yeah. you know yeah and seeing all those people gathered together you could get hugs and you could get hugs you know and yeah not <laughs> yeah. <COVID>. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> and, uh, and you know strangely enough um people are saying and this is a classic um ultraviolet was ultra COVID <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. because, you know we're still we're still in need of a hug and I yeah. would sort of want not to be able to hug people. Um, yep. And so, you know, those sorts of things are part of what we need to do. And mm -hmm. I think dancing is also really important in our psyche. You yeah. know, that's why I love the, the, yeah. kind of the music. And and even if I have Spotify on, I'll get up and have a little, you know, yeah. a leg jig, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on that wonky hip. Well, <laughs> it's not knee, so much the, the hip, it's the bad knee yeah. from dancing. I twisted yeah. it at a, at a pre-party thing, my yeah. party function. But, um, yeah, it's, you know, as you get a bit older, some things yeah. deteriorate. Do you see other exhibitions coming? Do you think that – have is there anything in the future? Like, oh, I'll, more... be, I'll be exhibiting. <laughs> Don't yeah. worry. I mean, well, my there's... Instagram account is like my regular gallery, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. and, and I'm always yeah. posting information. I'm posting yeah. images that I see. I share things. Yeah. You know, to me, it's like we can now share what we see. And yeah. that's 
you know, to me is what I find fantastic, you know, yeah. to get, and to get a response from people who I do specifically send information yeah. to because yeah. I'm now in that position where I can do that kind of, you know, networking and and pushing of, you know, valid information, particularly, say, you know, ceasefire in Palestine. Yeah. That's yeah. just unbelievable. And there's so many interesting stories mm. coming out and, and bloody stories coming out yeah. that need to be heard. Um, yeah. The number of journalists who are di- who have died there is mm. phenomenal. Mm. So, you know, there's, there's, these things are important and our community still supports Palestinian. I mean, I don't know if you saw the broadcast, but I saw something where the there were a group of queers for Palestinians. Yeah. Ragged off the route. Oh, no, I missed that. No. Yeah, yeah, uh, no. I, I kind of thought, gee, what a shame. Yeah. Wouldn't I mean? You know, they they were protesting and they weren't yeah. they to do something with a bit of humor. You know, yeah. 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 if people have a bit of a twist on what they're yeah. saying. And I, yeah. I kind of feel that there's a desperation in in people nowadays that yeah. they've lost that kind of um, camp. Yeah, which did yeah. exist. Yeah, you're right. It's got to have that twist of sort of it makes it kind of humorous and witty. poignant. Yeah, and um, but still stands out. Really, mm. it's really powerful. Mm. Yeah, mm. was that was that the protest that sort of stopped the parade starting or something? Was it or no? I don't think it was the protest no. starting. I think it was during it because I just happened to see right. clips of yeah. the police just dragging people off to the side, and they all oh, had right. a big flag of you know. Palestinian, which I, yeah. you know, I'm a supporter of, but yeah. um, it's just that thing of, unfortunately, Mardi Gras is a corporation now, yeah. and it has Tourism New South Wales as its major sponsor. It has major financial corporate responsibilities to all the, you know, donors and sponsorship yeah. elements that they have, and. It's still a really important parade for a lot of people who are just coming out and yeah. live in suburbs where there's still an awful lot of homophobia. You know, absolutely. Trans yeah. issues are the 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 main issue we have to you know keep pushing as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and I do. Um, I think we forget but, sometimes. Like we're so we've been in the in the bubble, the queer bubble, for so long that I noticed even uh, in the the. Uh, the group that I was with, there was a lot more younger people invited in this time, and it was their first time in the parade. Virgin. Virgin. I know, I know. Um, and right. it was like I was just watching them. They were just overwhelmed. They were just incredibly overwhelmed. And I spoke to a few of them, and they all had those stories of, oh, my parents don't know I'm going to be in the parade or right. um, I've just come out or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's quite extraordinary, yeah, what, what the momentum does. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it may look daggy on TV. It It's kind of, you know, somehow they have to kind of limit some of the numbers, but yeah. maybe that's yeah. what, you know, will occur in the future. But it yeah. is such an important thing to happen yeah. for so yeah. many people. I mean, I, it's, it's such a shame Fair Day didn't occur because that's such a... It's a powerful thing. day, yeah. It's a big day, yeah. It's yeah. extraordinary being in the parade and watching and having people watch you and cheer yeah. you on. And the majority of those people are all there because they love us and... They want to be there and they kind of and they're get us <laughs> and they're tourists, yeah. But they love it. Like there's, there's, there's some power in kind of their cheering. It is yeah. a performance, you know. Yeah. And, and people who do make the effort to dress up, yeah, that gives that joy. I mean, I remember when Peter Tully and David McDermott mm. went to South America and saw Rio, you know, yeah. at Kanabali there and came back and created this enormous skeleton that was for HIV. And it was... Yeah. You know, in the Day yeah. of the Dead style. Yeah. I'll have to try Incredible. and show you. Yeah. yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. And it's yeah. that mindset of the creativity has yeah. kind of waned a bit because the yeah. creatives died. A lot of them died. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Through HIV. And it's kind of, you know, it's there are people there who are creative, yeah. but they don't kind of get the opportunities, you know, to yeah. really push the, the buttons. And Not as many singular people making a statement. It's all kind of... Well, I think it's better to have group groups making statements. I, mean, I, yeah. I was very pro Ron Muncaster because yeah. Ron was just about, you know, glitter and tinsel himself. And yeah. you'll be new, you know, great. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, you know, it's kind of, and, and, you know, good on him for what he did. He certainly, you know, put the G in glitter. But, yeah. um, you know, there are other stories and other issues. It doesn't have yeah. to be all about me. It's about yeah. the other, you know, the yeah. community and those young people, the disabled people, the leather yeah. people. The, yeah. Multicultural you know, people. Yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. You know, it is it is about all those others that yeah. really need to be acknowledged. Yeah. And I think if we can, you know, somehow get them thinking, you know, well in advance, then yeah. they come up with something better next time. Yeah. yeah. Not that I'm telling people what to do. <laughs> so where can people find you? I, I know you you mentioned you've got, you run socials. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Seymour Sydney. Yep. Or Queer Sydney Seymour. Yep. I and, might put those links. I'll send yeah. out um, a bit of a, uh, an evaluation tomorrow, as I do. Oh, yeah, please That's what do I love. I love me. a bit of a feedback feed. No, it's not about you. It's just... Um, <laughs> nah, it's all right. It's okay. I've learned... I'll, send, I'll put those links. Uh, <laughs> and I've learned to evaluate everything. <laughs> yeah, right. Because the funders love a bit of blah, 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 blah. Happy Acon. There we go. <laughs> Um, so socials are uh, at the city of Sydney or oh, the archives. The, the archives, definitely. I mean, I'm not Unbelievable, yeah. looking after that, but they yeah, can yeah. have a look at all the photos there and and use them if yeah. they're for publications or for. But they have to ask permission, of course. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, Seymour Sydney is my um, Instagram tag. And queer Seymour, queer Sydney Seymour is the other one. Great, and all on Facebook as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've got wonderful. three accounts on Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I kind of think, is that a real one, or is that, yeah, am I going to be duped well, there? So, for whatever reason, I you know made the decision to try and have separate accounts. You yeah. know, do different things on different accounts. Yeah, try and yeah. keep one count. You know, whatever. It didn't yeah. work. <laughs> Just well, look, um, we're probably at time. Uh, really Any lovely questions? having a chat with you. What about questions? Yeah, I've got, there was only the one question. Does anyone have any questions I can't see in the... I didn't see any. Oh, they've all gone. Oh, there's 13 participants. How fast. Yeah. And like I said, from everywhere, which is lovely. Yeah, great. Well, thanks, gang, for being there. Yeah, and look, thank you for sharing your time. Thank you for sharing a little bit of yourself. Um, I know. Uh, yeah, look, I well, I know who the lucky one is. Yeah. Who gets the, who gets you primarily? Thirty three years. Thirty three years. I know that that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's really wonderful. What a journey! Find the right person, what as you have done too. Yes, absolutely. Twenty years. Al. Twenty oh, years good. this year. Yeah, oh, mm -hmm. last year actually. Oh, I so mean, yes, it's amazing. You, Oh, <laughs> didn't everyone? <laughs> oh, no, I shouldn't say that. Um, no, cool. look, thank you. We've got nothing but love for you. Uh, I know the community is ex like is extraordinarily grateful for for what you've captured over the years, um, and we're going to have that forever. That's going to be yeah. something yeah, forever. So that's it's the idea. really extraordinary. Yeah. yeah, no, my pleasure. It's kind of you know my passion. It was my baby. I didn't yeah. have the real thing. I decided that was going to be my baby, and yeah. fortunately now it's growing up. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, uh, stay with us just for one moment. I just want to remind everyone that the next uh, episode is in early April, and we're going to be interviewing, or I'm going to be chatting with Victoria Spence and Sarah Barry from Life Rights. I know that Seymour knows um, Victoria. Um, they run a really incredible um, uh, end-of-life funeral service. They're death doulas, they're counsellors, uh, they have an in-house mortuary. Uh, I love speaking and talking about death and dying and all of that conversation that is very me, so I'm really excited to talk to the, the two of them um, and just tease out what they do because um, I know that they're working a lot with the community already, but I'd love to extend their services to a lot more. We've got uh, Afternoon Delight coming up on the 24th of March, a couple of weeks away uh, at the event cinema. And we're showing the Noel Coward story, Mad About the Boy. Um, and we've got a lovely, quirky little lesbian short with a bit of a twist. Um, and we've got the AIDS quilt 
um, short film as well. So it's a nice cross section, and we'll have our drag queens serving the the afternoon tea as we normally do. So that's a couple of things to look forward to. You'll be able to have a look at the webinar on Acon's YouTube channel, and I'm very grateful to see more for allowing me to do that. I probably should have asked first, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my I, dear! I, I learned. I learned it. I would have put a few day. lashes on. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, yeah. and that's about it for the night. So thank you everyone for coming in and joining us. Really appreciate. It. Tell everyone. So tell everyone about the the, the webinar because we are doing some really interesting people and quite diverse in the spectrum that we want to sort of have a chat to. And um, yeah, oh, just thanks again, Cindy huh? Moore. Yeah, lovely. Really beautiful. Um, and we'll tune out for the night. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Big hugs. Love you very dearly. Thank you. Bye.